All right, so uh, I've had this thing pulled completely apart and had some time to uh, to look through uh, the circuitry on it. And so uh, I'm gonna walk through the, the main uh, power system of how this thing works. So uh, you've got your standard AC inputs here. So uh, the line is tied to this fuse and uh, you might be able to see right there, this is a uh, 20 amp, 250 volt fuse. Also, uh, so between, so this is the line and this is the neutral. Um, there's also a, uh, a varistor right here. So you can see noted right there, this RZ, that's the varistor. Um, there's also across, again, uh, line and neutral here is this big capacitor. So that's a, a 10 microfarad uh, AC capacitor there. Um, one of the other weird things is they've got uh, a set of resistors here, and I, I'm guessing this is just they use three to uh, to help dissipate a little bit more uh, heat. So they could probably use uh, similar resistors to somewhere else, just some cost savings. So that's uh, that's three 120k resistors uh, in series, so about 360k of resistance there. All right, so uh, next up on the neutral side of things, we've got uh, this pretty big inductor. So, you know, I tried to measure this thing, but it's it's in the circuit, so I, I don't know how accurate that was. Um, my little LC meter said it was about 300 uh, micro Henry's, but again, that's in the circuit, so I don't know. Um, I wouldn't, wouldn't really trust that until I pulled that thing out and, and measured it uh, outside of the circuit. So, um, but yeah, next up inductor. And so thus far, we've basically just got some, uh, some AC filtering stuff going on here. Um, so next up, we have a little lead here and this lead coming off. So this is on the, uh, the neutral, this is on the line, and this is a jumper that leads right here. And so these, uh, both come into some diodes, um, and that's going to go in and feed kind of the, the low power, uh, side. So, uh, you've got transformer and some other power regulation that's going to kick down some lower voltages uh, to get used by the ICs and, and control circuitry. Uh, so that's feeding off there. So then again, you've got our uh, our neutral coming over the line, coming over into a uh, diode bridge rectifier right here. Um, and then it's got positive negative DC voltage coming out of that. So uh, the little rectifier here is a PB2510. So we've got the uh, the two AC legs coming in the middle. Again, you've got your neutral and your line. Uh, and then you've got positive negative DC current is going to be coming out of here. So uh, we're going to have some DC coming out. This is going to be the positive leg. Uh, this up here is going to be the ground section, the negative leg. So we've got uh, a big... DC capacitor right there that is a 10 microfarad. And I mentioned the last video, you know, I didn't understand why they use different ones here. It looks like really just some different uh, voltage uh, capabilities. And so AC versus DC. So you're going to have a, a little bit higher measured voltage on the DC on this rectified output side. And so a little bit of a different capacitor there. But, um, and so it is worth noting uh, the negative leg of the DC, the, the ground side is connected here with a series of jumpers, right? So they just get a bunch of current capacity uh, jumpering that over. I'm not exceptionally sure why um, they didn't do uh, a trace, um, what the purpose is. So again, if somebody may know better than I do about that, I, you know, I'm really not sure, you know, the purpose, but anyway, so they've got series of jumpers here. Um, also, just while I'm looking at this, I looked and I'm not 100% sure uh, why the fill on these uh, higher power traces are dashed. I don't know if that's simply to let people understand like an identification that those are the main power traces and that those are going to be carrying higher voltages and currents um, than all these smaller traces. Uh, I read up and some people said it, it may have been something to do with uh, solder mask adhesion and different things like that, that there, you know, could have just been some different reasons for it, but I couldn't really figure out why. So if anybody knows, please let me know why they do that. Um, 
the fill on these higher power sections because you know i thought at first maybe it would be to uh to carry more current but it, it's they're not connected right the little um you know little dashes are not connected so it can't really help that much with that it can't be for heat dissipation because again there's not much extra surface area so not really sure what that's for if you know please let me know um so anyway uh now we've got negative positive and here are the two main capacitors. Uh, these are both uh, 0.24 microfarads. Um, these are uh, specific kind of specially designed capacitors there um, for higher resonance. And it does say on them that they are rated for 30 kilohertz. Um, and then uh, also tied across uh, the positive and negative, that's your main output for the coil. So uh, the main heating coil, I actually measured the inductance and it measured about 55 and a half microfarads for me. Um, again, I'm sure there's some tolerance on this stuff, so it probably wouldn't be exactly that. But um, when taking these two capacitors in parallel, that's going to form essentially uh, one big uh, one half microfarad cap and you're going to have a 55 micro henry um, inductor and so that calculates out to about 30 31 kilohertz um, and the capacitors actually right there say 30 kilohertz so that's apparently they're all spec to do that i figured this would be more down around 20 because that's what i've seen in some of the other designs um, i will say up through this part um, and basically all I'm showing you today is going to be very, very similar um, to a reference design that I found uh, put out by NXP. And so I'll, I'll show you that and I'll link to it. Um, that design, again, very, very similar in the power stage here, the main, uh, you know, inductance stage to that design. Uh, what is different in the NXP design is all the control circuitry is laid out a little differently. Um, so at, at this point, right, we've got our little resonance tank set up, um, main inductor, and then that's going to be controlled by this IGBT. So pin two, pin three on that IGBT, and that's going to be the collector and the emitter. Collector going to the positive, emitter going to the negative, and that's going to work like a big switch. So it's going to turn current off and on, and then that's going to be controlled through pin three, the gate, which is going to be driven by this circuitry here. Now, before I get into this, I do want to point out there's a trace coming off here and another trace, this black trace coming off here. Um, I believe those are going to be measuring the frequency um, of resonance in this coil. Um, and that'll be important uh, later when we talk about kind of how this thing is being controlled. But um, so you've got some gate driver circuitry, you've got a transistor here, and then two more here uh, with some resistors, and there's a little diode. So what the heck's going on here? Well, um, I'll roll in the schematic here, but um, this is a PNP transistor, and the other two are going to be NPNs, and this is a little uh, totem pole controller network. Um, and so you've got some... Uh, a couple of resistors here that are in parallel. Again, I think that's just a little bit of uh, heat dissipation that they're using two instead of one to get a little bit uh, higher power rating. And so uh, looking at the, the PNP, you've got uh, pin two coming to ground. Uh, pin one is actually going to come back and tie into pin one of one of the NPN transistors. And so pin three is controlling the gate on this IGBT. So essentially you've got this PNP and the NPN and and so this third transistor it's going to be turned on and send signal to both of these other transistors the uh, the NPN and the PNP. Now when it tells them hey here's some current the NPN is going to turn on and the PNP is going to turn off which means it will essentially tell the gate, hey, turn on, okay? And so that will then conduct current through here. Now, whenever this thing turns off, it will turn the NPN off and the PNP on, and that will actually pull this gate to ground. And so it will drain the IGBT down. 
Okay, and so it will then turn this connection off. And so uh, that is going to turn current on and off into our resonant tank system. Now, the way that's actually being controlled is by this microcontroller. And so it's got a bunch of signal traces coming in and it's sending probably a pulse width modulated signal um, to tell this transistor, hey, turn these other two off and on and thus drive uh, the gate, which switches the IGBT on and off. Um, now, the reason why they've got to have all this is because the microcontroller can send like a three to five volt signal out, depending probably, you know, what logic level it's using. Um, but that's not going to be strong enough to turn this IGBT on and off very fast, if it can even switch it at all. And so you've got to have the transistors to give a higher power level to be able to switch this thing fast enough. Now, uh, the way this thing works is, is pretty neat. So I'm going to try to do an analogy here uh, to see if I can let you know kind of how this thing is really working. So I've just got a little metal ruler here. And so the, the principle, um, whenever you get the capacitor and the inductor together, it forms a resonant tank, which is kind of like an electric spring. And so like if I take this thing and I flick it, uh, it, it vibrates just a little bit, right? There's a little bit of resonance. And so if I get this thing really... Um, you know, pinned up against something where, uh, you know, I'm not going to damp it, um, it will have some vibration, right? Some resonance. Now, the thing is, is that it slowly dies down. And so essentially what's happening in this resonant tank is whenever you hit that system, right? That, that, uh, that capacitor and inductor, that LC circuit, you hit it with current, it will vibrate. Basically, it will resonate but it will die out because it's a change in current that actually causes it to resonate. Um, and so if you just feed it DC current, it will, whenever you switch it on, it will resonate and then it will stop. Okay. So what you've got to do is you've actually got to turn the current on. And then when you turn it off, it will flip it the other way and it will resonate. So essentially what we need to do is we need to turn that DC current on and then off continually to keep the resonance kind of going, right? You've basically got to flick this thing over and over or else the resonance will die out and you won't get any power uh, transmitted through the inductance. So um, the way this thing does that, the microcontroller has to time how it's hitting this thing, essentially. And so it's got to turn this IGBT on and off perfectly in time with the resonance. Because if you hit it at the wrong time, uh, the resonance will be basically out of phase and you can cancel that out. You get power loss and heat buildup and a lot of problems. You just you lose a lot of efficiency. Um, and so the microcontroller has to be able to measure the resonant frequency and where this thing is. And that's where a lot of this other control circuitry comes in. I mentioned you've got this uh, black trace up here and you've got this trace coming off right here and it's going to be able, and you can see it's feeding in through a bunch of little resistors there, a bunch of little resistors here, and it's coming over into all this mess. So there's a bunch of stuff going on that I didn't map out, but um, the basics are um, with all these other traces coming off, that's what it's using to measure the frequency, the voltage, and the current that is in this system. And the microcontroller is measuring all that, and it's calculating, hey, where is the resonant phase in this? And it's timing how it turns this IGBT back on so that it perpetuates the resonance in the system. And that's how you get essentially the, the resonance back and forth through your inductor that creates, again, that magnet flux that is then inducing the eddy currents in the pan, which is then creating heat, right? So it's really interesting because in like a Mazzilli ZBS tank, the MOSFETs turn each other on and off to create oscillating current. Um, this just uses one IGBT and it's being switched on and off to create, again, it's not necessarily uh, AC. It's a really interesting difference in operation principle because uh, again, this system maintains kind of that, that resonance, um, not by, you know, having two components which feed back with each other, 
um, in those two MOSFETs and the, the diodes in that, uh, again, Mazzilli style ZVS system. Uh, this is using a microcontroller to generate uh, the resonance partially. Um, you know, some of it's, you know, established by the, the inherent uh, in, inductance and capacitance here, but it's also, you know, if you read up on things, they can, they can change the power level by alternating the, the pulse width. Um, also, you know, I mentioned earlier, I, I think I had originally stated that I thought this would be around a 20 kilohertz system. Obviously, whenever I read up more, the reason why this is probably running a little higher um, is that you can get uh, audio frequency, uh, you know, down below 20,000 hertz because that starts getting human hearing. And so you can get ringing and stuff. Um, and whenever I turn this thing on, I could hear the pot ringing a little bit. Um, so, you know, just kind of an interesting system. I'm not going to get into all this and how they've got all this set up because, quite frankly, I don't understand it quite well enough um, to really get into it. And I can't find any data sheets, so I can't really identify any of the pins here. Um, I didn't really have a lot of work that probably isn't worth it because, you know, if, if I am thinking about employing this system, what I really care about is the main power section and uh, the IGBT system and how that all works. Because once it comes to the sensory and stuff like that, there's alternate ways that you can do that. Again, there's these reference designs. And essentially what you've got to figure out is how to read the frequency correctly, how to figure out you know, where the resonant wave is and how to time the signal to turn this thing on and off. That's what you've really got to figure out. And there's probably a few different ways to skin that cat. Um, I'm not really there yet. I don't know how to do that well enough. Um, so I don't know if there's going to be a part three of this video series, but, um, you know, if there is, that's probably the direction it'll go is can I take, you know, that system, um, from this design and use it. And in order to do that, again, I'd have to use my own microcontroller because I don't know enough about this one and I, I can't exactly reprogram this. Um, figure out how to write the firmware, figure out all the sensory stuff. That That's going to be a bit of a, a problem to tackle. But um, anyway, uh, that's going to wrap this up. That's the analysis of the circuit. Um, if anybody's got any questions, feedback, anything that you saw that I was just wrong, uh, please let me know. Um, otherwise, I appreciate it.